welcome to my channel. My name is Gemma and in today's video we are going to take a look at some basic grid drawing techniques. Have you ever tried to do a grid drawing before and been quite disappointed with the end results? Well in today's video we're going to have a look at some do's and don'ts when it comes to drawing our grids and plotting our drawings. So let's get started. The very first thing you will need for a grid drawing is a good quality reference. For this video I found one on a free stock image website. I then edit my chosen image so that it is black and white. Once I've done that I copy the image across to Keynotes and apply a graph over the top. I use a transparent grid and adjust it so that I have a 10 by 12 grid system. You can adjust your grid depending on how many squares you would like across your image. I then make sure the cells are square and I crop and adjust my image until I'm happy with it. Now I can move on to drawing our grid and I'm going to show you how not to grid first. These are the most common mistakes that I see over and over again and they are really easy to avoid. My first mistake that I make is using the wrong pencil. I have chosen a dark pencil that is pretty blunt and I use really heavy pressure when I'm drawing out my lines. I mark out two centimeter intervals along the top and right hand side of my grid, but I then don't bother to mark out those intervals along the bottom and the left hand side. My next mistake is just judging where I'm going to place those vertical lines by eye. I have nothing to line those up with at the bottom to ensure I have evenly spaced straight lines. I then repeat that process across my grid and as you can see it's not even or square. My other mistake is using really heavy pressure for my grid. The lines are too dark and they will show through my final drawing and when I come to erase it it's really tricky because of that heavy pressure. Now we will move on to the correct way to grid. I'm going to use a lighter pencil for this example, a 5H, and it is also nice and sharp. If you find that you're using heavy pressure, try a different pencil such as a 5H to see if it makes a difference. I'm marking out those 2cm intervals like I did in the last grid. However, this time I make sure I mark along the bottom and the left hand side as well. By marking all sides, I can accurately line up my ruler to draw my grid. Notice how I'm drawing those lines using lighter pressure. I'm holding my pencil towards the end to ensure my tone is light and even. I can now go over my lines with a kneaded eraser and remove any excess graphite. We want the grid to be as light as possible. We don't want to be able to see any of the grid through our finished drawing. I'm now going to repeat the process for the horizontal lines, making sure to line up the 2cm markers on either side of my grid. I'm using light pressure again, holding my pencil towards the top. I'm also making sure that it is a nice sharp pencil for these lines. It's good practice to number your grid and reference image so you can easily keep track of the square you're working in. I do this by marking along the top and one side of my grid, but you can do it on all sides of your grid if you would prefer. Okay, so after all of that prep work, we can finally get to the fun part of drawing. As with the first part of this video, I'm going to focus on the common mistakes first. I'm following the shapes that are in each cell of my reference photograph. But because of how uneven I've drawn my grid, this is going to impact my overall drawing of that B. My drawn cells differ in shape and size, which will distort the size and shape of my drawing. You can probably already see that some of those shapes are elongated or shortened because I'm trying to fit what's in the reference photograph into my uneven grid. Now 
The other common mistake that I see all the time is using heavy pressure. Notice how dark my pencil work is here. By sketching out using heavy pressure, I'm going to find it really difficult to erase if I make a mistake. I will also be able to see those mistakes through my finished piece. And again, going back to our grid, because it's so dark in tone, it's really obvious over the top of my drawing. Now I'm moving on to the correct way to plot a drawing on a grid. I'm going to start at the same point in my drawing as the mistake section. I'm following the reference image in a logical order so that I don't get confused on where I'm not working. If I lose my point on the grid, I can use the references that I've marked out along the top and the side. I'm going to work from top to bottom of the image, but you could also try working from one side to the other. Find what works best for you. I'm using a nice light pressure to draw with. It's much lighter than the previous drawing and it will be easier to erase if I make a mistake. And I can darken outlines once I'm happy they are correct. I'm using my grid to my advantage, measuring the main lines in the reference photograph against the grid so that I can accurately place it on my drawing. And because I spent 30 seconds extra time marking out the size of my grid, the squares are all even, which will ensure my drawing is in proportion, unlike my previous drawing for the mistake section. I'm continuing to work methodically from top to bottom within my grid drawing, making sure that I add in those correct shapes so that I get a really good final piece. Once I'm happy that I have got my accurate drawing, I can then go over any lines that I feel need to be darkened, or I can remove any sections that I feel are not quite correct. I also look back at my reference photograph and decide where those highlights are naturally sitting within that image, and I mark those in very, very lightly within my drawing. That way, when I come to um, add my shading, it's nice and easy to keep those highlights within my final piece. So there you have it, that was our video on very basic grid drawing skills. So drawing our grid and also plotting our drawing on our grid. I would say that the main takeaway points from today's video are to one, spend that time drawing out your grid. The preparation work really does pay off. So make sure that your markers are accurate and you are then gridding that out correctly using the nice light pressure because you don't want to see that grid showing through in your final piece. Two, I would say keep referring back to your reference image so that you're making sure you're working in the correct square of your grid and that you're plotting the correct shapes in each part of your grid. And then lastly, when you are plotting out your drawing, make sure that you are using nice light pressure. That way, if you do make any mistakes, it's nice and easy to adjust with an eraser and those mistakes won't show through in your final piece. So, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Be sure to subscribe because I will be posting videos weekly and also make sure to follow me on Instagram. Bye!